viewers welcome to this video lecture series on computer networks lab in this session i shall be explaining you an experiment using the simulation tool cisco packet tracer and in this experiment we shall be connecting more than two pcs so what is that we need to do we need to drag and drop the pcs here we'll click to this end devices category and place the pc here the font size seems to be a smaller let us increase next so we'll take one more pc place it here so we have taken two pcs now now we wanted to connect now we wanted to take one more pc third one so that is pc2 these are the three pcs so normally if at all we have to connect from pc0 to pc1 or from pc1 to pc2 so connecting these two two pcs is possible because each of these pcs have got one ethernet port and that port can be used to connect one end of the cable now what to do if there are more than two pcs because ethernet port is one but the number of other two devices that has to get connected are two or it may be more than two also like we want to connect four pcs five pcs six pcs like this for that reason we need to take an intermediate device called as switch in one of my previous sessions i have explained about this intermediate device switch so watch that session in order to know more things about the switch now here we are using the switch so what we can do is we can use this device and connect all the three pcs any point of time if you want to uh, find out what type of cable need to be used between two devices you can click to this orange color font wherein this is automatically going to select the type of the cable whether it is a crossover cable or straight through cable so let me click here then fine from this pc to the switch switch and uh, we have selected the switch 2950 which has got 24 ports you can just place the cursor here on the switch and check what are the different options available here for the switch we have the cli mode we have the config mode and physically so physical view of that particular intermediate component can be viewed see you can see here the different ports are there this is the physical view of that component now at present what is that we are going to do is we will connect these devices okay to the switch so similar to the previous experiment here also we need to check whether pc0 can communicate with pc1 pc0 can communicate with pc2 similarly pc1 with pc0 and pc2 and pc2 with the pc0 and pc1 so for this we need to assign what the ip addresses click to this pc first let us do for pc0 we'll go to the desktop go to ip config and type the address now we are going to give 192.168.20.5 and just 20.5 okay press enter the subnet mask will appear by itself this is a class c ip address you can see the subnet mask here 255.255.255.0 so this is about assigning ip address to pc0 in sometimes we forget what piece what ip addresses we have assigned to these pcs so we can always use the label and then write the ip addresses so i'm just placing the label here 192.168.20.5 this is this was the ip address we have assigned to pc0 now let us do it for pc1 also 192.168.20.6 and here i will give 192.168.20.7 so remember these are the labels just these are the labels these labels has nothing to do with the functioning of the experiment now we need to assign it actually we have already done for pc0 let us do for pc1 go to the option desktop click to ip config and type the ip address 192.168.20.6 then we'll go to pc2 desktop ip config 192.168.20.7 close all these windows so you have assigned the 
IP addresses to all these PCs. Now we'll check whether these PCs can communicate with each other. We'll use the ping command. We'll click to PC. Always to type the command, you should click to that component that is the PC and then click to command prompt. So you, you need to type here the command ping. So you are in PC0, you want to ping PC1. PC1's IP address is 192.168.20.0. Let us see. Yes, we are getting the reply. When we see four packets, we are receiving from 20.6. That means PC0 is successfully communicating with PC1. Whether PC0 can communicate successfully with PC2 or not, let us check. Ping 192.168.20.7. Yes, we have received the packet, so it is a successful communication. Same procedure you repeat for PC1 and PC2. PC1, you are in PC1, you want to ping PC0 and PC2. Getting the reply, so it is a successful communication. Now ping to 192 dot, that is you want to ping to PC2, 192.168.20.7. Yes, getting the reply, successful communication. So this is also verified. Now let us see whether PC2 can ping with PC0 and PC1. Click to PC2, go to the command prompt and type ping. 192.168.20.5 Receive the reply, successful communication. Now type ping 192.168.20.6 Enter. Yes, we are getting the reply. So this is also successful. Here we have connected only three PCs. You can connect more than this also any number of PCs because you have the option here you can see the fourth octet is meant for host for class C IP addresses so you can you have the option of 0 to 255 you need to exclude 192.168.20.0 and you need to exclude 192.168.20.255 because the first and the last address are called as the network and the broadcast address and these two addresses in the network cannot be assigned to the host. Now all these three PCs here belong to one network and that network IP address also you can write down here in the label. Let me write here 192.168.20.0. So this is the network address 192.168.20.0. is the network address. This is just for our understanding. We are not going to assign this network address to any of the components in this network. This is all about the experiment here, wherein we wanted to check whether more than two PCs can be connected. So more than two PCs cannot be connected directly. It has to go always via the intermediate device called as switch. Let us see whether it travels via the switch or not. Go to the simulation mode. Select the packet here. You can see towards your right side, you have simple PDU. Add simple PDU. Drag and drop. Okay. Click to the host. Now, since you are placing the packet on PC0 first, that becomes the source host. And now you want to say that PC2 should be your destination host. So, I will place next to the packet on PC2. Then I will click to play option. You can see here the packet has started moving from PC0. It is first reaching the switch and the switch is forwarding that packet to PC2. You can see here at the bottom right side of the screen, the status is in progress. Now it has turned to successful. So PC0 is able to ping PC2 successfully. So this way you can always check using the simulation option also here, whether the packet is traveling via the intermediate device or not. It is traveling. So this is all about this experiment. Let me stop the play option here. 
so in the next experiment we shall see what will happen suppose if i am changing the ip address of one of these species now what i wanted to tell is all these species you are having the first three octets same isn't it 192 168 20 here 192 168 20 192 168 20 suppose in case if i want to change this to 21 that means I am saying that I will change the third octet here. So the moment I change the third octet, the network also gets changed. That means now this PC2 belongs to an another network. Whereas PC0 and PC1 belongs to the first network. So two networks will get formed here. What will happen? Whether the packet PC0 can communicate with PC2, whether PC1 can communicate with PC2. So that is what is the next experiment in my computer network lab series hope this session is useful to you all if you find it useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care